For decades, the supercar world operated under a simple, unwritten rule. To be a true elite, a car had to be light, rear-wheel drive, and powered by a massive, high-revving engine. This was the philosophy that built legends from Italy and Germany, from the screaming V12 S of Ferrari to the track home precision of Porsche's 911. Supercars were not just about performance, they were about exclusivity, demanding a multi-million dollar price tag and a level of driving skill that most people simply didn't have. They were built for the perfect day, on the perfect road, for the perfect driver. And then, in 2007, a car appeared that broke all the rules. It was a heavyweight all-wheel drive coupe with an engine that was only a V6, built by a mainstream company that most people associated with reliable family sedans. When Nissan unleashed its new GTR, promising to humble the world's best on their own turf, the automotive world laughed. It was seen as an audacious, almost foolish claim, but that laughter quickly turned into stunned silence. The R35 GTR didn't just compete with the most elite supercars, it destroyed them. It posted lap times that seemed impossible for a car of its class, its price, and its configuration. It exposed a fundamental flaw in the prevailing philosophy of what a high-performance car could be, and it didn't do it with raw power or a fancy badge. It did it with a vision and a level of engineering that was truly a decade ahead of its time. This is the story of how one car from Japan rewrote the rulebook for the entire high-performance industry. To truly understand the R35, you have to understand the man who was its heart and soul, Chief Engineer Kazutoshi Mizuno. He was not just a car designer, he was a revolutionary. He famously dismissed the idea that weight was the enemy of performance, stating that it's all about how that weight is used and distributed. His philosophy was a direct challenge to the old guard of car building. He believed that true performance shouldn't be limited to perfect conditions. He wanted to create a car that was a total performance machine for what he called the real world, a supercar that could be enjoyed by anyone, anywhere, at any time, in any weather. To achieve this, he threw out the traditional rulebook and built the car on what he called the premium midship PM platform. In a front-engine car, the heavy transmission and drive shaft typically run the length of the vehicle, adding weight and complexity. Mizuno's solution was a world first for a front-engine Ford WD vehicle. He placed the engine at the front, but the dual-clutch transmission and the gearbox were mounted at the back, just ahead of the rear differential. This unique transaxle layout linked the engine and transmission via a lightweight drive shaft, resulting in a near-perfect 50 over 50 weight distribution. This wasn't just a fancy engineering detail, it was the entire foundation of the car's success. It meant the GTR was not only a handling genius, but it was also a far more balanced platform to build on than its rivals. While a Porsche 911 was famously rear-heavy and an Audi R8 was mid-engine, the GTR's design provided a stability that made its immense power accessible to a wider range of drivers, fulfilling Mizuno's core vision. While other supercars were boasting about massive V10S and V12S, the R35 was powered by a seemingly modest 3.8-liter V6 the European press was initially skeptical, but this was no ordinary engine. It was the VR38DETT, a twin turbocharged heart of pure innovation. Mizuno's team focused on efficiency and durability over displacement. The engine block featured a closed deck design for added strength, allowing it to handle immense boost. The cylinder bores were not lined with heavy steel liners. Instead, they were sprayed with a microscopic layer of plasma-coated iron. This not only saves significant weight, but also drastically reduced friction, allowing the engine to run more efficiently and produce more power. The use of a semi-dry sump lubrication system ensured that oil was constantly supplied to the engine, even during the high G-forces of cornering, a crucial detail for a car built for the racetrack. But what truly made the VR 3.8 debt special was a touch of pure human craftsmanship. While most modern engines are built by robots on an assembly line, 
Each VR38 DETT was meticulously hand-built from start to finish by a single one of four master craftsmen known in Japan as Takumi. They were Izumi Shioya, Nobumitsu Gozu, Tsunemi Oyama, and leader Takumi Kurosawa. These men had spent a lifetime honing their craft, and each engine represented the culmination of their passion and skill. When an owner lifted the hood of their GTR, they found a small plaque bearing the signature of the craftsmen who poured their soul into building their car's engine. It was a powerful, personal connection that no robotic production line could ever replicate. So, the GTR had a perf, act, foundation, and a meticulously crafted heart. But its real genius lay in its brain a suite of advanced electronics and mechanical systems that worked in perfect harmony, making the car feel less like a machine and more like an extension of the driver's will. First, there was the revolutionary GR6 dual-clutch transmission. In 2007, while most performance cars were still using clunky, single-clutch automated manuals, the GTR's gearbox was a game-changer. It had separate clutches for odd and even gears. While you were in first, the car was already pre-selecting second. When you shifted, it wasn't a clunky, head-jerking gear change. It was a nearly instantaneous handoff. With a gear change time of just 0.15 seconds, it was faster than a human could even blink, a feature that has since become standard on almost every high-performance car today. Then, there was the legendary ATSA ETSA ETS Pro all-wheel drive system. This wasn't a simple 50 over 50 power split. Instead, it was an intelligent system that could send up to 50% of the power to the front wheels, but only when needed. It used a network of sensors to monitor everything from throttle position and wheel speed to yaw rate and steering angle, constantly calculating the perfect amount of torque for maximum grip and stability. On a slick, wet track, while a rear-wheel drive Porsche 911 would be fighting for traction, the GTR would simply hook up and launch, making it feel almost effortless. This wasn't just a system for acceleration. It was the secret to the GTR's incredible cornering speed, allowing it to take turns with a level of confidence and precision that its rivals couldn't match. And finally, the Bilstein Damptronic suspension could automatically adjust its damping force in a mere 0.01 seconds based on the driver's actions and road conditions. The car was constantly thinking, always optimizing, giving the driver a level of control that was simply unheard of. The suspension worked in tandem with the car's highly rigid chassis, a masterclass in stiffness and stability. The result was a car that didn't just go fast in a straight line, but one that was planted and composed under any condition, on any surface. All of this groundbreaking technology culminated in a single, monumental achievement. When the R35 GTR arrived on the scene, its price tag was a fraction of its European rivals. Yet, on the legendary Nürburgring in Germany, it humbled them all. The GTR, with an official lap time of 7 minutes and 26.7 seconds, was faster than a Porsche 911 Turbo, a Ferrari F430, and an Audi R8. The speed was so shocking, so utterly unbelievable, that Porsche publicly disputed Nissan's claim. They bought a GTR and tested it themselves, but their best time still couldn't come close to Nissan's. This public spat only solidified the GTR's reputation as the supercar killer. It proved that superior engineering could triumph over snobbery and tradition. The R35's true legacy isn't just that it was fast, it's that it democratized performance and changed the industry forever. Its advanced dual-clutch transmissions, intelligent all-wheel drive systems, and active suspension are no longer just features of an expensive niche car. They are now the very technologies that define the modern sports car market. From the Audi R8 to the Acura NSX, these cars now use the same principles the GTR pioneered, proving that Mizuno's vision was, in fact, the future. The GTR proved that you didn't need a multi-million dollar price tag to achieve supercar level performance. The R35 GTR was a car that didn't just chase speed, it chased a new way of thinking.
It was a technological revolution on four wheels that shattered the old hierarchy and made the dream of owning a supercar a reality for millions. It didn't just compete with the best, it showed them the future. But what do you think is the single most important innovation in the R35 GTR? Was it the intelligent AWD, the lightning-fast dual-clutch gearbox, or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments below.